The first thing we need to do, of course, is to download the software from the Ocean Swift website. And you'll find it on this page. Or you can just click on the first link in the video description. Download the current version, which is 3.2, and open up the folder. And you'll see a couple of executables. There's one for 64-bit operating systems, and one for 32-bit. And there's a couple of DLLs. And if we look in the PDF manual, we'll find out exactly what that means. The VSTI version, which is the DLLs, only allows for control over external hardware in most DOS. That's obviously not the version we're going to be using here, but you might find that useful for your own purposes. Step 2. Regardless of the controller, you must install Xbox 360 controller drivers. Except on Windows 10, which is what I'm using, so I didn't have to install these. If you're using older Windows versions, then follow the link and install it. 3. To use an Xbox 360 controller, you can skip this step. Now I'm using an Xbox One controller, so I'm assuming they've just non not gone back and corrected this. I uh, assume it's also the same for the new Xbox Series X and S controller, and perhaps even the original Xbox. You could try using that controller and see what happens. This is just for the PlayStation controllers. And again, they haven't come back and added PS5, but I'm assuming you would have to go through these steps for that as well. Uh, follow the link and follow the instructions through on that link as well. Number four, everyone needs to do this. You need to install the Loop B1 software. Now, this is a driver that sits in between Renoise and the Ocean Swift MIDI control software. It allows them to talk to each other. You can click on the link or click on the second link in this video description, which will give you a direct download. This sits in the background uh, on your computer. It will automatically run on startup, but it doesn't take any resources. It only activates when something connects to it, either the MIDI control software or Renoise. And that's it for the rest of this instruction manual. We'll be covering those in depth in the rest of this video. Next, plug your controller into the computer and launch the Ocean Swift software. Now click on the big OS button in the middle and this will synchronize the controller to the software. And we need to set up the configuration here. So click on the cog button and you'll see all the options available to you. Now the first thing you'll want to do is change the snap settings. Put them all to zero. This makes sense for the triggers because when you release them you want them to go back to uh, the fully off position. But for some reason the analog sticks instead of being in the middle as the snap value it has to be zero, otherwise you won't get the full range of values. I don't know why this is, but it is just the case. Next, we have the MIDI channel setting. If you need to change this, you can do this here. And there's the CC numbers for each different control. You want to make each of these different, so that there's no crosstalk between each control and how they're assigned within Renoise. Once you've set everything up to your liking, then you can go ahead and save that. So at a later date, in a different session, you can load it back in, and I'll load in this old preset here, which has everything already set up. Final thing to do is to change the out. Put that to loop B. Uh, this won't be saved with the configuration, so you'll need to do this every time you launch it. And in Renoise, do the same in the Preferences, in the MIDI settings, and make sure Loop B is selected here too. Now they can talk to each other. We can put in some devices we want to control, and go to the MIDI map button. And we can now assign some buttons. You don't need to worry about the different types, uh, whether it's analog or simple switches. 
Renoise will automatically detect what you're using and use the correct settings. And now we can press some buttons to make some changes. There's some flip values here and that will change what they're doing to the inverse and you can also change the mode from a simple button press where it detects whether you're holding it down to a toggle and it'll switch between them every time it's pressed. With the D-pad up and down and left and right it's a little bit different. So go back into learn mode on sticks or this can sometimes happen with the analog sticks because you can either jog them and that'll uh, interfere or uh, sometimes they'll move on their own if like mine your left stick is broken so it can be good to turn it off just while you're doing this there we go now the left and right and up and down on the D-pad are slightly different. They detect whether you're holding it down and it will move things gradually. The next issue is a big one as you've probably just seen with the analog sticks. Uh, not only can they move on their own sometimes if you've got a problem with them but also it's impossible to move in the X direction while not moving in the Y direction. And thankfully, they've already thought of this and they've got a solution for it. So I would advise you to start with these off and then when you're making assignments here, I would just press the button on and that will send a single signal and assign it to that. You don't need to move the uh, analog sticks at all. Just press the button and it'll happen automatically. It's best to turn them off so that you don't get any crosstalk like I showed you before. And then exit learn mode. And don't forget to turn them back on again. There we go. Fully working. And just a final comment on using the CC numbers. You may in Renoise, you may in Renoise want to use uh, the loop B driver here in the MIDI section at the same time. And this will also detect what you're doing here. Now, certain MIDI messages and CC numbers are dedicated especially the mod wheel CC01 and volume CC07. So you should definitely avoid at least these two for the CC numbers and probably the other ones as well, just to be certain.